Hey guys, so a fellow student asked this question. What is the difference between empirical and molecular formulas, and how do we calculate both of them? So to start off, let's figure out what molecular and empirical formulas are. Both molecular and empirical formulas represent the elemental composition of a compound. Or put simply, how much of each atom exists within a compound. The only difference between the two formulas is how they represent this. Let's take the compound butene, for example, or C4H8. This is its molecular formula, for it shows how many atoms of carbon and hydrogen there are in the compound. We have four atoms of carbon and eight atoms of hydrogen. We can turn these numbers into a reduced ratio form, so that eight atoms of hydrogen are at the top and four atoms of carbon are at the bottom. If we reduce this ratio, we get two atoms of hydrogen at the top and one atom of carbon at the bottom. This represents the empirical formula. So that butene's empirical formula is CH2. But if the molecular formula is the actual amount of atoms in a compound, and the empirical formula is just a reduced ratio, why do you even have empirical formulas to begin with? Well, in chemistry, empirical formulas are actually really helpful. First, they can help us calculate the percent composition of elements in compounds, Second, they can help us an analysis in the analysis of an unknown sample, and then they can also help us in the synthesis of a new compound. But empirical formulas can also help us figure out the molecular formula, as we will see through this problem. In this question, the compound ethylene glycol contains 38.7% carbon, 9.75% hydrogen, and the rest of it is oxygen. The molecular weight of ethylene glycol is 62.07 grams. What is the molecular formula of ethylene glycol? To start off, we need to calculate the empirical formula. First, we will assume that we have 100 grams of the compound, thereby replacing the percentages with grams. However, we still don't know the mass of oxygen. So we subtract 38.7 and 9.75 from 100 to see how many grams of oxygen exist within the compound. We then get 51.55 grams of oxygen. Now we convert the grams of each element to moles. There are 12.01 grams in one mole of carbon, 1.008 grams in one mole of hydrogen, and 16 grams of oxygen in one mole of oxygen. Therefore, the moles of each atom are 3.22 moles of carbon, 9.67 moles of hydrogen, and 3.22 moles of oxygen. We now divide by the smallest moles available, which is both carbon and hydrogen, 3.22 moles, since they have the same amount of moles. Once divided, we get C as 1, H as 3, and O as 1 to get the formula CH3O. Now this is the empirical formula, but we want the molecular formula. So remembering the molecular weight as 62.07 grams, we will calculate the molecular weight of CH3O. We calculate it by adding up the mass of each element as defined in the periodic table, while also multiplying by the amount of atoms there are which is defined in the equation above. Therefore, getting a molecular weight of 31.034. Now we divide 62.07 by 31.034 to get around two. Because dividing the molecular weight by the weight of the, by the empirical formula gets us two, we multiply two by the empirical formula to get C2H6O2 as the molecular formula. And so this would be our answer. I hope this video helped you to understand the difference between molecular and empirical formulas and how to find them.